everyone and welcome back. It's Mindy here with you today for Lawn Fawn and I'm going to be sharing with you a couple ideas for packaging up your Valentine treats. This is just a good way to mass produce if you're making them for co-workers or for class treats. So we'll go ahead and get started. For my first idea, I'm going to be using the tote bag die and also the new candy hearts. So what I did off screen is I went ahead and die cut out the tote bag from some ballet slippers cardstock. You need two pieces of those so you die cut that twice. And I also die cut this out of chili pepper cardstock so I'll have a red and a pink tote bag that I'll decorate. Now I'm just going to go ahead and fold along all of the scored lines. You'll be able to see them visibly in person. It's a little bit harder on screen but the scored lines are really visible. And I'm just folding those all down and then I'll come in with the bone folder and just crease those edges really nice. So there's a crisp line for each of them. I'll do that for both pieces of cardstock. Just folding all of those tabs over. This is what's going to attach our box are those tabs. Now there are also some lines on there that are scored on the sides. I didn't fold those in right away. I'm saving that for when I actually get treats into the bags. And I'm just doing the same thing with the one that I die cut from the ballet slippers cardstock. It's easiest to decorate your bags before you attach them together so I'm not even going to add any adhesive to my bags just yet. Off screen I did go ahead and cut some pieces down to put on the front of the bags. The design on the front are pretty simple and I made it that way in case you need to make I don't know, let's say 25 of them for class treats. So I did keep it pretty simple. I'm using three layers actually on the front of the bag, front and back of the bag. So I'm starting off with a piece of white cardstock. This is measuring about one and a half by three and a half. And that's going to cover most of those front and back panels. And then I'm just lining this up on my craft mat right next to each other so that they line up in the same position on each side. I'm also adding in a strip of gold glitter cardstock. This is out of the uh, Holiday Sparkle pack. This is a really true gold cardstock. And I'm lining those up the same way and just attaching those to the white cardstock strip. For the gold and also the pattern paper, I just I kept it three and a half inches long but I just trimmed off about a quarter of an inch so that they layer on top of each other. The pattern paper that I'm using here is out of the Knit Picky Paper Pack. And so these ones are ready to go and I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, tote bag that I cut out of Chili Pepper cardstock. This one I changed up just a little bit. I'm still using the white cardstock as my first layer and also the gold cardstock out of that Holiday Sparkle pack. But this time I'm using some pattern paper from the Really Rainbow Paper pack. It's just a nice light pink stripe that I thought offset on the red really well. And then attaching that right on top of the gold glitter cardstock and just trimming off any little excess that I had. I still want to add a few more elements to one of the sides of my tote box. So I'm going to bring in the candy hearts. And I did go ahead and pre-cut this off screen. I used the backer panel and I die cut that from some pixie dust glitter cardstock. And then I used hugs and smile and I die cut that out of some mermaid cardstock. This is just going to go right on the front of my box. I'm going to attach the two mermaid cardstock pieces onto the pixie dust backers using the liquid glue. And that's going to hold down really well. You can also put some blocks on top of it if you'd like to just kind of hold that down for an extra couple minutes. Make sure that's nice and secure on top of that glittered cardstock. And these candy hearts are just adorable. They make great centerpieces on cards if you wanted to keep it nice and simple. Now that I have that element ready, I can go ahead and start adding the adhesive to the tabs of my boxes. So I'm starting with the one with the ballet slipper. I prefer to use the score tape. This is the quarter inch score tape. The reason I like doing it, you can use any adhesive you prefer, uh, but just from my experience, if I'm giving, the, giving these to kids, I like to use the score tape because that has a really good hold on it. It holds up great for when kids are handling it in school or in their backpacks. 
I also added adhesive to the bottom of one of my panels. And I like to just come in, line these up, kind of make sure I'm lining them up where they're supposed to go. So I'm removing the adhesive, attaching the tabs to the side of the box for each panel, lining that up, and then I can remove the uh, backing of the adhesive from the bottom of it and also on the side so I can attach these two panels together. And I kind of hover over it a little bit before really attaching it because once it sticks down, it's really stuck down. It's kind of hard to remove without actually ripping the cardstock. So once I'm satisfied where, where it's lined up, I can push that down really well and then I take my bone folder and just run that all through the tabs and the bottom of the box to really push that down well. Once that's secure, you can kind of see I pinched that together. That's where the scored lines come in on the side. And you can always tie off the top with some ribbon or some twine if you have. I'm going to do the same thing on the tote bag I have out of the chili pepper cardstock. So I'm just removing the backing of that adhesive and attaching these two panels together. I also added some to the bottom to make sure that that is nice and secure. I really love using the Lawn Fawn cardstock when I'm making treat boxes or treat bags. It's just a really good sturdy cardstock that holds up well to adding treats and also for when you're just in transit delivering these to whoever you're going to give these to. So I decided I had one more thing I wanted to add in the front just kind of as a decorative element. So I'm using the Everyday Sentiment Banner Die and I did die cut two of them out of white cardstock. This was a little bit long so I'm just adding that banner back on top, holding that down with post-it tape, and that just trims it down to fit the front of my tote bag. I didn't want any excess hanging off, just so I didn't chance things getting bent or hung up on anything. And it's just a really nice extra element to add to the front of the bags. You could do this out of any color cardstock or even the glitter cardstock would be really pretty too. I'll attach these two sentiment banners to the front of the bag. This is something I should have probably done while it was still flat before I attached the boxes together, but it still works out. So I'm just adding that right into the center. I added some foam squares behind my candy hearts and just using the tweezers, I'll go ahead and add that to the center of my bag. You could also die cut out some tags and add tags to the top of your tote bags too and then just tie that off with some twine would be a really nice finishing touch. I just kept these really plain and simple so that for mass producing it would be easy to recreate. So one more idea I wanted to share is using the heart treat box. This is a super cute treat box. I was really excited when this all came together because it was just very simple to die cut, very simple to decorate, so many different ways to decorate it. So you just need to die cut it once. I actually used a raspberry cardstock for this and I folded along all of the scored lines and then just going over all of those with the bone folder making sure, sure that those lines are really nice and crisp folds and it comes together really well. So I'm adding on that uh, quarter inch score tape to all the tabs. So you only need just a few pieces there, not a lot of adhesive to hold it together. And then I'll remove the backing of the adhesive and you just go along the box and connect those tabs to that side panel. And just hold that down is enough to make these hold down really well. There's the little tab. I just made sure it was lined up really well. I kind of pulled out the top pieces so I could see the inside of the box and then attached that as well. So as you can see, this treat box comes together really quickly. So now I'm taking this die piece, which is also in the heart treat box die. I die cut it four times out of the gold glit glitter cardstock and four times out of white cardstock. Then I took these hearts and I just added that to the white cardstock panel, held that down with post-it tape, and I ran that through the die cut machine so that when you see through the hearts, it's going to be the gold cardstock that's showing through. So just using the liquid glue and the tweezers, I'm going to add that white cardstock piece to the gold glitter cardstock. You could have any color in between there or behind there. 
I just decided to kind of match that with the theme I had with the tote bags. And as I'm going, I'm just holding that down with the blocks to make sure that's pushing down really well. Once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and add some quarter inch score tape behind each of the four panels and add that to the side of the box. This is something you could do before or after. It really wasn't too hard to add to the box after I had glued it together. So either way works out really well. So just lining that up on all four of the sides. Now these treat boxes are such a great size, you could add your candy, if you have candy hearts or a little piece of chocolate, or if you're giving them for class treats, you could add some stickers to the inside of them. That would be kind of a neat surprise. Once those panels are decorated, these tabs on the front, you kind of interlock together to create a heart. Now your first time doing it, you can see I had to kind of finagle a little bit, but once you get it together once, it goes together quickly again after that. So it's just that first time has a little bit of trick to it. So to decorate that front heart, I'm using Pixie Dust cardstock. So this die is already cut in half. This is on the heart treat box die. And I just attached that with the liquid glue. Now for this one, this is off of the candy hearts using the smile. And I'm just gonna cut that right down the center of the heart and attach that on top of that pixie dust glitter cardstock. So this adds just a little bit more sparkle to the top. You could certainly leave it as is with the white. I think that would be just as cute. Once I have those glued down, I do give it a little test run. So I just unhook those hearts, open it up and just making sure everything is moving the way it's supposed to. Really, really cute treat box. These would be really easy to produce if you need a lot of them because they don't take up a lot of cardstock. I did have a little bit of a smudge of adhesive on the top there, so I just removed that with my mono sand eraser. And then I'll just bring in one more time the cute tote bags so these go together really well with them. Just a couple different ideas if you're looking to give treats to coworkers or to kids. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. The featured products will be linked down below in the video description. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a great day.